And welcome back to another episode of Underdog Podcast. Happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Hopefully the rest of the week is not too bad for you, whether it's Monday through Friday or Sunday through Saturday or wherever the days off you have or wherever the case may be. It's another great day where you live at, despite what's going on in the world, despite what's going on in your personal life. Stay positive, be happy, and if anything, try your best, right? So as the day titles, uh, as the title of today's episode shows, it's about the Eagle Eye movie. Now I understand that some people don't necessarily uh, like. You're not always going to be interested in every episode of the things I talk about, but at the same time, I mentioned before, you really have to branch out of your comfort zone. Because just because it's something that doesn't seem interesting to you, well, that's the things that you kind of need to be looking into sometimes because it helps you get the bigger picture of what's going on in the world around you. But if you, like I say, if you always focus on certain things or certain aspects, certain genres, you won't really see everything that's going on. You, in order to raise your conscious awareness, well, you can't raise your awareness if you're not aware of the things that you're not aware of if that makes sense how can you be aware of something if you don't know it exists and there's so many things out there that i have no idea happens or even goes on and stuff like that even if it's like you know for a younger generation as far as certain lingos or words being spoken in the english language which is confusing as hell or certain issues going on around the world there's tons and tons of stuff and information out there that i could talk about day in and day out and even though it might seem random, it actually is not. You just can't see how it all connects. And this is another one of these things. It seems like it's random because I'm sitting here talking about an Eagle Eye movie that came out in 2008, but it's, it's not random. That's the wild part about all this shit. It's not random. And so I think I mentioned this movie before. I've been wanting to watch it again. I know I watched it when it originally came out. So probably like 2008, 2009 time frame, somewhere around there. Probably whenever it came out on DVD or Netflix or wherever the case may be. And I know uh, one of my best friends was talking about it. And then uh, uh, the Tory Says show, I think they did a, she did a watch party on Twitch about it and stuff. For those who have the Amazon Prime membership, or whatever, on Twitch. And someone's been telling me to watch this. And it's on Amazon Prime, interestingly enough. Amazon Prime actually... Amazon been, if you pay attention, Amazon been collecting some movies and stuff. And even with that show Utopia that I talked about, I was a conspiracy within a conspiracy TV show. It's wild because they're throwing out hints, man. <laughs> they're throwing out hints. They're throwing out clues and stuff, man. Eagle Eye is one of these predictive programming movies, which was so ahead of its time that I didn't even catch it. Like, I didn't, even, none of this shit even made sense to me. When I first watched it, I mean, I thought it was crazy. I thought it was a thriller movie and stuff, and I kind of got some stuff. But whoa! In hindsight, I'm like, oh shit! They're t they're literally telling you exactly what goes on. They're literally telling you exactly what goes on. They were talking about data collecting and and creating profiles and stuff like that, and 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 with the what is it uh eric snowden talking about the prison thing uh getting into all these uh different electronics and stuff like that hacking into all these different things we're talking about ai supercomputer more or less actual quantum computing they just didn't call it that all in this movie back in 2008 where you have your guy from transformers Shia LaBeouf, and from disney shows being the head star, and we want to know why he's a little off now. You play, a, you play enough of these roles in these movies, you start questioning some things too. Oh my God. So let's, let's go ahead and get into this. And I just want to show y'all, this is uh, uh, on Wikipedia, just a little breakdown of the movie. I'm not going to read the whole synopsis. But as you can see, it's Eagle Eye is a 2008 American espionage science fiction action thriller. God damn, they cover every genre they could think of, right? <laughs> it's directed by DJ Caruso, written by John Glenn. John Glenn. Who's John Glenn? Uh huh. Uh, John Glenn. 
has developed, sold, and produced over two dozen projects at every major network, including ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. Prior to taking over SEAL Team, John Gwynn's so John Gwynn is aware of uh, military operations. See, that's interesting right there. That he has worked on the CBS drama SEAL Team. You got a question. Where do these people get these information from? Writers write based on real world events, man. Like, not, I mean, the, the best stories are the one that's real. Not the ones that you sit there and make up in your head. Like, they're based on something. And seeing that he's done work on that, he also did script feature films for every major studio, including Journey to the Center of the Earth, Clash of the Titans, Law Abiding, Law Abiding Citizen. Oh my God, that's another one. He did a Lazarus project. He has developed a page one rewrite of Eagle Eye that Steven Spielberg attached to direct. Okay, but he didn't direct that. Law Abiding Citizen. I believe that's the one with Jamie Foxx and uh, Gerald Garrod and they and the guy ended up blowing a building or something like that. Anyways, oh man, this goes deep. It's always a deep dive. So essentially the plot of Eagle Eye is basically you have your lead actor and uh, Shia LaBeouf, his character uh, Jerry Shaw and his brother Ethan Shaw which are their twin brothers. Uh, the older brother or twin Ethan Shaw, rather, is the more successful brother, while Jerry is, you know, you're kind of freelance, uh, not freelancer, you're kind of grifter, in a sense, like, he does a bunch of odd jobs, uh, he doesn't know what to do with his life, and he just, he dropped out of Stanford University, which makes, I don't even know how he even got to it, but whatever, but he dropped out of Stanford University and stuff like that, and he's kind of just roaming around doing different things around the world and, and whatnot, but his brother Ethan ended up dying, and he hadn't talked to his brother for a couple of years. And then he goes to the funeral and stuff like that. And then after he comes back from the funeral, he checks his bank account and see if he got money in there trying to, which I don't know who does that. But I guess that's back then. You kind of, you, you, there's no online banking. So you hoping and, and he's hoping this check with cash and stuff like that and going to the bank account, whatever the case may be. He goes to find $750,000 in his bank account. And, it, and then the ATM machine starts spewing out cash. He's freaking out. And he's like, oh my God. Money. And then he goes into his apartment and he gives the the, uh, the little nice old lady, the landlord, gives her money for rent and stuff. And then she's like, hey, there's a bunch of people who came and dropped off packages. He goes in his apartment. There's a whole bunch of uh, packages, crates and stuff, crates for a sniper rifle, uh, military grade weapons, stuff that, you know, you can only get on the dark web. You know, if you're out there on Silk Road and stuff and all these different things and these ammos, high, cal high caliber sniper ammo rifles. Uh, yeah, sniper ammo for, for sniper rifles. Things that he shouldn't have and stuff. And right then and there, you could tell that, okay, he's being set up as a patsy. He's he's being set up and stuff. And then he gets a call on the phone, and there's a woman speaking. So come to find out, this woman speaking on the phone is actually an AI computer. So the whole movie is based on two different things. It's showing you how they set up patsies. How they set up, how regular everyday people seem to, and in a sense of, this is not necessarily an MK Ultra thing where it's mind control and they flip a switch, although they do have that. They're showing you that we don't even need that. We could just take a regular person, find that person's weak point. Let's be honest. Someone like me. If, if my profile shows that, obviously, I talk about the government, that they're going to classify me as conspiracy theorists, you know. You could call me a loner that I have a limited amount of friends. I have a small social circle. Like I, I could easily be set up to be a patsy. Like I know this. I'm aware of this. Like it's, I'm aware of this. Like if, if <laughs> because if I were them, if I was someone in the power to be that were able to pull strings, stuff like that, and utilize resources, I would set someone up like me as a patsy. Because my trigger point, obviously, is my kids. You pay attention to how I talk about my kids and how much I love my kids. Like I'm not saying nothing that is not already obviously there for those who are paying attention. It's, it's not about intelligence. It's, I don't like the word intelligence. It's awareness. What are you aware of? So you can use my kids as a pressure point, which is what happened to the other co-star in this movie, uh, played by, what is her name? Played by Michelle Monaghan. I, I forget what her name, her character's name was. But she pretty much got involved with all this because... Her name was Rachel in the movie. 
because they were threatening her son because a woman called on the phone saying, hey, we got a picture, put a picture, a video up of, of her son on the McDonald's TV screen. And she sees from outside the window, it's like, we know where your son is. So you're freaking out. Like I said, someone like me, you get easily, man, I was hearing a beeping noise. I think it's people outside cutting the yard. I was like, what the fuck am I hearing this beeping noise for? Oh my God, I really hope that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, it's a truck. <laughs> I got paranoid and shit, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I know, I know. Like I'm saying shit about the government, but as we go on with the episode of uh, this podcast episode, I'm showing you shit from the government. So I'm not, I'm not. It's, I don't. Honestly, I don't know nothing. I'm just a regular guy. But these people tell you exactly what they're doing. Just no one's paying attention. I say it all the time. I can't say it enough. Hell, they even had Anthony Mackie, which is your uh, Falcon which would be in the Falcon Winter Soldier, which comes out next month, I think, on Disney+. Plus. He's even in this movie. Rosario Dawson is in this movie. Like, it was a Billy Bob Thornton. It's a star-studded cast in this movie in 2008. Man, I love Rosario Dawson. She's pretty. But it's funny how... I don't want to say it's funny, but it's, 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 it was eye-opening because the movie went over my fucking head. The first time I saw that movie, it went over my head. And I even saw some things, it still went over my head. And then it wasn't until I watched it, I finished watching it last night, how much the movie went completely over my head. And that's what it is, man. When you're not aware, and it was, it's not about intelligence. It's just that you're not aware of this stuff. Because we'll watch this movie and be like, oh, man, uh, well, that's crazy the government's doing this stuff. As opposed to now when we watch this movie, like, oh, shit, this is what the government is doing. They're, not, they're showing us what they're doing. And then it's because it's so it's so crazy that it has to be entertainment because it's so unbelievable because it's so truthful or based on some factual information. It's stuff is movies like Eagle Eye where they won't say, oh, based on a true story. But it's the movies that they say based on a true story, which is a complete false <laughs> that they could just taking main characters and switching stuff around. Like that Judas and the Black Messiah. I was watching something on, uh, I think it was Watch Mocho on YouTube. It was, it was talking about the fact versus fiction, fiction as far as that movie goes. I'm like, man, that's propaganda right there because there's been tons of Black Panther movies and stuff. Been out for the longest. It's been straight to DVD and straight to Netflix and stuff like that. And once they put it in Hollywood, they're going to twist the story up. But it was interesting to see in this movie, in the Eagle Eye movie, how they get these people to set them up as pastors. How you can take regular everyday people and set them up because the lady was just her and her kid. So they use her kid as a pressure point to the point that she was going on along this wild, incredible craziness where people are dying all around her and stuff. And they, and they had to, they stole something and they stole something from people at gunpoint. And it was just all these different things. And I highly, I highly suggest that. If you go ahead and you have the time, go ahead and watch it. If you want to know what the government does, you, because guess what? We're not, it's not like you're, you're, you're breaking into some top secret information. You don't have to break in nowhere. Ignorance is a choice in the, in the age of digital information. Ignorance is a complete choice. And we all choose to see what we want to see when we're ready to see it. And I don't think I was ready to actually see, I, was, I wasn't ready to actually see that because my awakening was happening during that time. I talked about it before, and when I joined the military, and I started watching more documentaries and stuff. It was really just as far as the internet grew, the more I was able to access certain information, not necessarily through because of websites, but really just the download speed. That's why I say, like, you hear people talk about, I think I was talking the other day about accessing it to internet, and really, it's not even, it's accessing, but that's it. Because once you get able to get on the internet, it doesn't matter what the quality of speed is, Eventually, it'll download where you have to wait a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. Eventually, it will download. You can watch wherever you're trying to watch or get the information on the website that you're trying to get. Maybe I'm old enough to remember dial up internet. So anything's better than dial up internet in my mind. I'm like, hey, I don't have to sit here and literally watch a web page load line by line, part by part on a website. <laughs> the shit just comes all at once. Fast as hell to me. So I still keep that in mind as context. Like I remember when it was took this long. I remember when we had the internet at all. Damn, that sounds like I'm old. <laughs> but I'm not, man. I'm not. I'm not old. 
So in the movie, as far as the two main uh, characters go, Jerry Shaw and the girl Rachel, they they go they're being led to all these different things. And from the outside perspective, this FBI agent and even the the Air Force OSI agent, which is uh, Zoe Perez, which is played by Rosario Dawson, they are on the outside looking in, but they can see that these so-called random events are not really random because something else is going on behind the scene and then they're trying to put it together because it seems like something is going on or uh there's a digital uh footprint being left at all these different places that because as far as the ai supercomputer goes they were only able to access or a lot of things were being accessed through electronics and the scary thing about this whole thing is really the ai the AI supercomputer was able to hack into anything and everything electronic. Doesn't matter what it was. The AI was able to get into it. And that's really the underlying message of all this. I mean, even the, the Patsy stuff and how they set it up, how they set up everybody. So come to find out the AI supercomputer was pulling all the strings, was doing all these different things around the world. Because even as uh, Jerry Shaw and the girl Rachel, they were being assisted by other random people. And they were like, hey, do you, they were random to each other, too. So everybody was a complete stranger. Compromentalization of information. You only know what you need to know to do the task that you need to get done. You can't see the dots connected because you don't have enough information. Your lack of awareness on the issue prevents you from having a complete understanding. That's all that this is. That's all that's going on in the world. Everything seems chaotic. Everything seems random, but no, it's just your lack of awareness, your lack of understanding because you don't have the full spectrum of information to create an actual picture of what's going on in the world. Hell, in your own personal life. Let's be honest. How many times you try to pull... Uh, dots together and stuff or connect dots together and stuff trying to figure out what's going on in your own relationship trying to figure what's going on at work trying to figure what's going on at school like this is what is this is what we're doing it's awareness you have to raise your conscious awareness to understand things i just don't like the word intelligence because what we're talking about is awareness you could you could so-called be as smart as you want but if you're not aware of what's going on how smart are you if you can regurgitate what they tell you in school, does that mean you're smart? Or does that mean you follow instructions and you can be programmed? Where is free thinking? Where is critical thinking skills at? Question everything. So as I'm watching this, I was like, well, man, how does these two people and then a random man comes and helps and everyone kept saying the same thing to help. They was like, hey, the woman on the phone told me this. The woman on the phone threatened to do this. The woman on the phone proved something incredible. It was enough to freak him out. Because as I'm watching, I'm like, man, what would I do in this situation? I'd probably do the same thing. Because I'm like, oh, man, why is this entity seem like it's godlike being able to take over every electronic? Like, there was a time where Jerry Shaw was on the train on the subway. And the supercomputer was able to hack into the phone next to him of a complete stranger and call him. And not even call him, leave it on, instead of saying, like, unknown caller, say, Jerry, pick up the phone. <laughs> I don't think it said those exact, thing, exact words, but that's what it was saying. Like, hey, Jerry, pick up the phone. Like, that's, that's crazy, right? <laughs> and all I can think of is, like, wait a minute, isn't this prism what Eric Snow was talking about? And then I'm like, wait a minute, AI, supercomputers, quantum computers, is the same as the show I was talking about on Hulu. That I... Forgot the damn name of, and I mentioned it before. I know I did a whole episode on the podcast about it too. So go ahead and check that out somewhere on the catalog. Uh, it's probably like the episodes twenties or something like that. I can't remember. But man, as I'm saying like this is in 2008. This movie, if they made this movie today, it would be a lot more eye open because it's like, oh, well, because of technology, we can see the technology here today. But I'm like, wait a minute, this movie was made in 2008. Which means they probably already had this technology for decades. They had a supercomputer. Let's see. Uh, down here in the plot. Okay, so this is the part where it, uh, it says Agent Perez is summoned by Secretary of Defense George Callister to read 
into Ethan's job. Let me highlight it. Read into Ethan's job at the Pentagon. So Ethan was under this top secret job and stuff, and then he had a whole fake cover story that his family didn't know about. That happens all the time in the military. That happens all the time in the military. When they say, we can't really tell you, no, they literally t- say, it, that's what it literally means. We can't tell you, but not in the sense of, uh, you know, it's so toxic. No, we can't tell because I don't know what's going to happen to me. I don't know what's going to happen to my family if I tell you what's going on. I, I signed an NDA before. I know I talk about like doing stuff with OSI, but I actually signed an NDA, which it never even occurred to me until this morning. That's exactly what it was. It didn't matter to me. I was like, I wasn't going to talk about it anyway. Hey, you told me not to talk about it. Good enough for me because when you're dealing with military and stuff like that, uh, you do something not the way they want it to be done, or if you break the law, you're tiptoeing a line of treason. And we know what happens to people that commit treason in the military. Execution. So and the things I did as far as junior detective and OSI, like they told me, you can't talk about this for five years. Just in case you need, we need to call you back to testify. Good enough for me. I remember my ex-wife, when I came home, she was like, oh, what'd you do? I was like, I can't talk about it. She's like, oh, you can tell me. I was like, no, I can't talk about it. And I knew what I was doing wasn't even that serious. But at the same time, I wasn't going to risk that shit because you don't know. You don't know who's listening. You don't know what they're tapped into. You have no clue. That's why when you look into the government and you're like, oh, this Supreme Court judge this, as far as like the tax returns with Trump and stuff, or, you know, something with Biden. Or how come nobody knew about this was going on with his family and stuff? You don't know who's being threatened and who's not being threatened. I mean, the one judge who was on the Epstein case, someone went into her house at the front door and killed her son and her husband. They sent her a message and then they killed the so-called person later. No, man, they sent her a message. Keep your fucking mouth shut. You don't know what these people are capable of, man. You don't know what they, what links they will go to. And that's what I really got out of this movie, that there's, <laughs> there's some shadowy people out there in the world that go to great links. We, we see it all the time. We see it all the time play out in our eyes. Jeffrey Epstein, we know he didn't kill himself. We, we're not that stupid. We know he didn't kill himself. But damn it, they're, they'll go to these great links to make it seem like he didn't kill him. That he killed himself. He committed suicide in the most, almost impossible way. That the guards happened to fall asleep at this time. Everything had to. Ha- everything happened to happen at this time and in this manner in order for Jeffrey Epstein to kill himself. Come on, man. These people are playing a different game than the rest of us. We're, you, me, the everyday regular person. We're playing Sims, the game Sims from EA, where you just you wake up. You go to school, you go to your job, you have your wife, your your husband, your spouse, whatever, your significant other. You have your kids or you adopt kids or you biologically have kids, wherever the case may be. You're in your own world. You go to movies, maybe you go on a family vacation, maybe you take a cruise or something. These people are playing a different fucking game than the rest of us. They're playing domination. <laughs> Is that a game? Yeah, world domination. That's what they're doing. They're doing something completely different than the rest of us. And that's what we got to understand that that their game that they're playing is affecting our everyday lives. When your taxes get raised, when you can't do certain things, when when they shut down this, when they have the government shut down, these people are playing a completely different game than the rest of us. And we got to wake up and see what's going on. So to get back to what I was talking about, because we know how I get off topic in an instant. It says, Ethan monitored the Department of Defense's top secret intelligence gathering supercomputer. Intelligence gathering. We know they collect data on us. Data is the number one commodity in the world. It's not gold. It's not not Bitcoin. It's not not money. It's not uh, silver. It's not lithium ion. Or it's not, yeah, it's not lithium for the lithium ion batteries. It's not natural. It's data. Because if they can know how you think, and collect your whole data profile and stuff. They know how to get at you. And that's the same way how they profile Jerry Shaw because of his twin brother, Ethan. They both knew that no matter what, he will be willing, they be, I guess they will be motivated if pushed in a certain direction. They both have the same motivation if pushed in a certain direction. Or they both can be highly motivated, rather. And they knew how to get to the, the woman, Rachel, through her child. Like I said, 
they know how to get to all of us because they've been playing a different game. We're late to the party. You understand that? We're late to the party. We're, we are late to the game. We are late. You're playing checkers. They're playing Chinese Go. Our 5D chess. They're, they're playing at something completely different. And even amongst themselves and the oppositions who are playing these games that they're playing, they're still playing a whole different game amongst each other. Like, it really messed my head up last night. I was like, see, I can't even watch movies, man. You can't, you come, I done got to a point now, I done raised my awareness to, I can't watch anything without seeing the real world ramifications of what's going on and seeing the underlining hitting message in all this propaganda. I was like, my God. I don't even watch, that's why I don't watch TV as much anymore. Even the video games I play, like, God damn, like, it's everywhere. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, man. I'm watching this, like, come on, man. I just, where's my escape? There is no escape. There is no escape. We're trying to run away from things that we can't run away from because it's everywhere. All you can do is choose to be ignorant. But once you take that red pill, like Neo, there's no going back. There's no going back. So it says top secret intelligence gathering supercomputer. You, <laughs> you know the DOD is doing this, man. Oh, man. Oh, man, I'm so screwed for saying this shit. Whatever, man. Fuck it. It's public information. I'm so screwed for saying this. What the fuck am I doing? Why am I doing this shit, man? <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. I shouldn't talk about this, man. But I can't help it. Something says, hey. Somebody's got to talk about this, bro. Somebody's got to bring this shit up, man. Maybe if I die or something, all this shit would be like in hindsight. Like, oh, my God, this guy was talking about it. Oh, no, don't make me a martyr. Don't make me a martyr. If I die, when I die, I die. It's in the story. That's it. Timeline's done. I'm going on to the next level. Our next episode, our <laughs> next game mode, wherever it happens after we die. You know, but we don't really die, so whatever. It says the autonomous. So this is the name of it. It's the autonomous. <laughs> the autonomous reconnaissance. Uh, reconnaissance. Rec reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. God damn. I was like, why well, can't I say this? Reconnaissance. The autonomous reconnaissance intelligence integration analysis. And they call it. And they call her Aria. Fancy words for AI. <laughs> Some, some form of version of artificial intelligence, some software program designed to collect intel for reconnaissance purposes. To spy on you. I, I, I like how they use, say reconnaissance. That's spying, bro. That's, 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 that's collecting information on you without you knowing. Spying. That's all that is. All these fancy words, they kill me with this. They kill me when they try to have all these fancy words. It, like This is not how regular people talk, and that's why they put it in this manner. So it sounds a certain way, but you don't really know unless you sit there and know the full details. But no, you don't have to ignore these stupid, fancy words or you want to call it high vocabulary, but it's not, man. Autonomous, autonomous, automated machine, computer right there. Reconnaissance, spying, intelligence, integration, data collecting, data collecting and data application, data applying and analyst. Analyzing the, the data in an algorithmic uh, manner, meaning using computer calculations or whatever to analyze the data to come up with a profile on you. At the same time, the supercomputer is hacking into everything. And they even said supercomputer. That's not supercomputer, bro. That's not super. The way they had it set up in the movie, it had it was being cooled by a liquid, a pool of liquid nitrogen, and it had all these different uh. Say reflectors and stuff like that. That's AI. You know, it's, it's almost like the same AI supercomputer in 2001 A Space Odyssey. But now it wouldn't be a supercomputer, it would be a quantum computer. Quantum is scary, man. We're going to get into to that here in a little bit, but quantum actually freaks me out a little bit, man. And not too many things freak me out. I don't even think. I would say I only think death freaks me out. Death does freak me out because the ramifications of what happens after you die, also what happens with your family. So, of course, none of us wants to die. 
but we know it's inevitable. We all will die. So stuff like that will freak you out, and then it's supposed to freak you out. If I'm not afraid to die, then that, then that means I'm not concerned about living either. So it's healthy to have a, a fear or anxiety of dying because you want to go ahead and make sure that you do what you can to live, to survive, one, and then to live. But AI, AI, quantum computers, really concerns the shit out of me, man. Uh, so it says, Calista leaves Perez with Major William Brown. To, so so per, the agent Perez, she was uh, going to use a supercomputer to investigate Ethan Shaw's death. But what she ended up finding was Ethan Shaw actually left a message because he left his post three minutes early. And the Major was saying that no, no one ever does that. It's not something you do. But what he did was was flashing the uh, the screen on his phone and was using a Morse code because he realized that he couldn't shut down this AI supercomputer. So we talk about AI and stuff, man. Like, I don't think people understand. Like, you you build something that can have the 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 computations ability more than every human being on the planet. You really think you're gonna outsmart it? Because while well, you're thinking ten steps ahead, that AI supercomputer is taking is thinking. A million steps ahead. Because what is randomness? Randomness is just things that we don't seem to connect to each other that seems like it's random. But really, it's just odds. If the odds are seem so impossible, then we call it random. But really, if you can calculate the odds of that happening and understand and put things in place, then it's no longer random. It just seems random to those that are unaware. So if I'm thinking a million steps ahead, and a regular person is thinking two, three steps ahead, then anything beyond that will seem random or coincidence. But there are no coincidences. So as the supercomputer is trying to uh, go off and do her own thing, the crazy thing is the supercomputer was right. <laughs> and that's what I'm like, is this what it's trying to do? And it makes me think of this show called Travelers. That's I think it's a Canadian sci-fi show, but it's the same premise or a similar premise in the sense of an AI supercomputer in the future is the one that human beings look to as a president and, and is in charge of everything because the supercomputer won't have any emotion. It's just going, it's all logical. It's all computations. So there's no bias in it. It just makes logical sense. So the in the movie Eagle Eye, the supercomputer was like, hey, human beings cannot be trusted to do the right thing. So they began the movie, they go off, and there's this mission in somewhere in the Middle East, and there was like a 33% chance that the target that they identified was the person that they wanted to kill. But come to find, and then the supercomputer said, no, abort the mission. And the Secretary of Defense was calling to abort the mission too, because he's like, that's not good enough confirmation. It's like, even if it's 50%, that's still not good. Now, we need a hire to know that who we're killing is the person we're killing. And we're also risking killing other innocent people as well around. Because, you know, these drone strikes that Obama did and a lot of people did and stuff. And I don't know if Trump did or not, but if he did, it's still not. Actually, did. I don't like these drone strikes because if you can, you have to make sure that who you're killing is the people that you want to kill deem uh Killable, which is, I don't know how, how you even say that, but they guess got, they got to be vile themselves. But you also want to make sure you don't have no collateral damage. But when it comes to military tactics, collateral damage is part of it. Like You, you put that into the calculation. It's like, hey, if you have a 9% chance of killing a target and you might have a, a collateral damage of about 2%, you take those odds. That's, that's a logical choice. But the human element says, no, we shouldn't kill nobody that's not worth killing. But that's not how it goes, man. That's not how it goes. So the supercomputer saw that the humans were were willing to risk killing one dude off a of one in, a third of a chance, thirty three percent chance that they're getting the right person. And the, from the president, and everybody minus the secretary of defense said no. Or said yeah, minus the secretary of defense. Rather, he's the only one that said no. So the supercomputer is like, oh, these people in the government and the executive branch cannot be trusted. We need to take them out. And so it says, uh, simultaneously, Rachel and Jerry learned that the woman on the phone is actually Aria, the supercomputer, and that she has activated 
them according to the Constitution's authorization to recruit civilians for the national defense. Now, I don't know if this is in the Constitution or not. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm afraid to even look into that shit. And one of the reasons Jerry Shaw was activated, was brought on by the supercomputer, was because he was the identical brother, Ethan Shaw. And Ethan had the biometrics and the coding to shut her down or do whatever. So what she, what the supercomputer uh, eventually ended up doing was eliminating the executive branch because they were in violation of the Constitution. It's so fucked up because I was, I'm like, you know what, this makes sense. Uh, this really makes sense, right? Like, <laughs> like if you develop a supercomputer. A quantum computer, we always say that every movie that has a supercomputer, or AI, quantum computing, whatever the case may be, that uh, they will attack humans because we humans are the problem. You know, there's a group of us that, you know, doesn't care about the rest of us in that manner. So if you're saying these people are willing to break the Constitution and break the laws and stuff, they need to be eliminated. Uh, it says, uh... Let me read this next paragraph. It says Perez and Bowman find evidence that Ethan Shaw hid in Arya's chamber and chamber and leaves to brief Callister. Afterwards, Arya smuggles Jerry and Re uh, Rachel into observation theater under the Pentagon. Both groups learn that uh, that after Arya's recommendation was ignored. So this is the main thing. I shouldn't read the other shit. So it says both groups. Uh, so everybody learns that after Arya's recommendation was ignored and bot and a box operation, uh, Balochistan, that's in the area, I guess, in the Middle East or somewhere that they did, resulted in the deaths of U.S. citizens. So the drone strike resulted in the deaths of U.S. citizens based on where it happened after that drone strike. Not necessarily the drone strike itself, but, you know, cause and effect. Another universal law. Another universal law. So... Arya concluded that to prevent more bloodshed, the executive branch must be removed. Arya is acting on behalf of we the people and cites the Declaration of Independence. Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. Makes you wonder kind of like what's going on now, right? Damn it. I'm going to say this shit. I'm going to say this shit. I'm going to say this shit. And this, it really freaks me out that I even came to this conclusion because you can call it a conspiracy theory. In fact, I hope you call it a conspiracy theory. Call it a conspiracy. I want you to think I'm crazy. The government is listening. Whoever's listening, I want y'all to think I'm crazy. I want y'all to think I'm crazy for thinking this because I want y'all to think this is the most craziest, insane thing. Because I'm crazy. I don't care now. I don't care. I hope people think I'm crazy. You know you have your cue. I showed you guys the cue drops. Probably why people are in my computer now. I showed you guys the cue drops and, and what cue is. And it's just a bunch of information. What if Q, Project Looking Glass, is just a supercomputer? What if it's just an AI or a quantum computer? What, what if it's just, what if Q is just an AI? And what if the people that are helping Trump is not a people at all, but just an AI? What if they just have access to an AI? An AI supercomputer determined that, hey, there's too much corruption in the United States government. Here's a plan to get rid of all these people. This is what you do. I don't care. I hope you think I'm crazy for thinking, for thinking that. I hope you think I'm crazy for thinking that. I hope you think I'm a conspiracy theorist for thinking that. I hope so. I want everybody to think I'm, I am that. Because that freaks me out. That freaks me out. Because that makes too much fucking sense to me. He, they, they put this in a movie that an AI supercomputer said we need to take out the executive branch because they become destructive to the American people. That's literally what has happened in this country for decades upon decades. And you're telling me if we developed a supercomputer in the, in the Department of Defense, that the same supercomputer, AI, whatever, would not come to the same conclusion? If me and you, the regular people, are coming to the same conclusion that the government is fucked up? Because it's funny, no matter what out of the political spectrum you're on, we all know the government is fucked up. 
Are you telling me a supercomputer cannot come up with a plan to take down the government in a manner in which it needs to take down and to open up the eyes of the people in the country and around the world to what's going on? You're telling me a supercomputer cannot come with a plan that can think of computations millions of times in advance than a regular person? But once again, please call me crazy. Please call me crazy. Please call me crazy. Because that shit freaks me the fuck out. That, that freaks me out. Because what if the whole Q thing, because the nons is different. But hell, Q and nons, the nons could be the supercomputer acting as well. Because how many bots we see all the time on social media? We know there's a bot farm that people are doing this stuff. I showed you what Patrick Berge was doing as far as the psychological operations in the army when he was deployed in Iraq and, and Afghanistan. So th they already do this. This was it, the Internet Interactive Activities, the IIA programs. Or Interactive Internet Activities, rather. You don't tell me they have a super, a supercomputer somewhere? So the old movie... It shows you how they sell passes, how regular people can turn and do these things. And yet, all she was doing, <laughs> all the supercomputer was doing was taking down the real villains. I mean, because that's what they were. That's what they were. Because they didn't go to prison. They, they didn't do none of that stuff. They, you know, there's no trial. There's none of that stuff. So the supercomputer devised this incredible plan that at the end of the day, uh, Jerry Shaw, uh, Shia LaBeouf's character kind of sacrificed himself and shot the gun up in the middle of the air while, while it was in the Capitol building. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just now realized that they were in the Capitol building when this happened in the movie. Uh, you gotta be shitting me. On a side note, go ahead and uh, check out Millie Weaver website which i think millennial .com. she has a documentary on the insurrection and shows how it was a complete setup months in advance and it was a complete psychological operation definitely check that i shared it on my uh, twitter account and gab account i think i no, i didn't share it on mine i forgot to put it on there but it's on my twitter and gab account and i believe i put it on my website too oh man my head hurts now yeah i'm not gonna lie my head hurts now like i, I I just realized that the shit was in the Capitol building. So what happened was Rachel's son plays a trump plays a trumpet in this little school band or whatever, and they went on a field trip to DC to do to 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 play at some place. And it seemed like it was band camp. Oh my god damn it, man. The little boy, Rachel's son, was played by What's this dude's name? Uh, is there a cast thing on here? No, the cast isn't on here. The full cast. Oh, it was played by Cameron Boyce. Cameron Boyce. Cameron Boyce. Child actor, star. He died. Uh... Is this on July 6, 2019? Boyce died at the age of 20 due to complications of epilepsy. So, you got Shia LaBeouf going crazy and stuff. At the play in this movie, you got Cameron Boyce or Cameron Boyce dying from complications of epilepsy. Have you even heard of someone dying from that before? Oh, that? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go there. And these are him and Cameron Boyce and Shia LaBeouf are former Disney stars. <laughs> They're fucking with us, man. They're fucking with us, bro. They're fucking with us, man. Anthony Mackie works at Disney now. Rosario Dawson works on Star Wars. Works at Disney now. They're fucking with us, guys. That's all. That's all this is, man. They're just... Oh, man. So, yeah, that's the little boy. He was playing the trumpet, and then the supercomputer devised his plan that uh, it's a little piece of crystal where if it... Huh, I mean, we talk, we remember we talked about frequencies. So once the kid plays the, the, the note F, I think it's a high F note or whatever, uh, on the Star Spangled Banner song, then it would the frequency would 
make the crystal explode and the crystal was being worn around his mother's Rachel's neck. Child Buff character Jerry Shaw figures this out. Him and the FBI agent played by Billy Bob Thornton, they figure this out and he gets there and he gets into the middle of the place. He's in a he dressed up as he dressed up as Capitol Police. Oh my god, they are this huh, this thing goes deeper than I even imagined. Because he went in there, pretended to be an FBI agent, and then he got into a tangle entangled because he went went through the underground tunnels and he got in uh, to it with one of these Capitol Police officers that are there because they were in a police uniform. So obviously it's Capitol Police, they're in a Capitol building. And then he takes the beats up the guy and then takes his uniform and then he goes in as a Capitol Police into the middle of the auditory or whatever on the, on the floor of the, in one of the chambers in the Capitol building and he shoots his gun up in the air so that way they shoot him. He ends up surviving and stuff, whatever, and he gets a, an award. But guess what? No one ever knows. They didn't, this is not public information in the movie in itself, as far as how the rest of the people in the movie know. This is all behind closed doors. Oh, he was in the house. He was in the house chamber where he fired a gun at. <laughs> you have to see the similarities in this man and you think all this is the coincidence everything going on right now in the united states and, pro and possibly around the world a supercomputer could be doing this. Remember, Trump keeps saying, we have everything. We have a plan. And you hear Q and QAnon saying, trust the plan, trust the plan. Well, whose plan is it? Is it the so-called 200 generals that devised this plan over decades? Or is it an AI supercomputer taking a million steps ahead? So that's, a, that's pretty much the plot of the movie. But what I really wanted to show you guys was this. AI.mil. I never seen this shit in my life. Didn't know it even existed. Just a quick search on I use DuckDuckGo search engine because Google probably wouldn't show you this shit. Who knows? Didn't know this even existed. It says transforming the Department of Defense through AI Joint Artificial Intelligence Center. Leadership in military AI technology is critical for the future of the United States national security. The JI, the JAIC is a is a focal point for the execution of the DOD AI strategy. So DOD, don't get mad at me for showing the people your public information website. So it says the DOD AI strategy unclassified summary, Department of De uh, Defense artificial intelligence strategy. Actually, let's kind of read some of this. Let's see what it says. This is so being tracked. It goes to media.defense.gov. And it's not going to load. It's not, it's not going to load. Let me see if I can clear up some memory on my computer. I'm not even using that much memory. I'm under 50%, 48%. Fucking with shit you shouldn't be fucking with, Damien. That's your problem. That's your problem. That's why, you, that's why you're a little off, man. That's why I'm, this is why I'm off right here. Because I'm looking into things that I probably shouldn't be looking into, man. I should just leave alone. I should just put my head in the sand and go about my daily business. But no, no, I'm too busy because I want to know the things that they don't tell us. And this is where it leads me to shit that freaks me out. It says AIs, uh, it says J A I C. I wonder how you jack, jacks. Probably is jacks or jicks. A guiding tenets. It says AI is critical to the future of the United States national security, and the JAIC is a focal point for the execution of DOD strategy. Uh, we acquire, we acquire and develop mature AI technology by partnering across three key communities: the armed services and DOD components, so your military, academia, and commercial AI industry. So, uh, DWare with their quantum computers and stuff like that, and academia. So. What is that? Uh, Stanford University, uh, MIT, Massachusetts Inf Information Technology or Institution of Technology. Uh, all those different schools, such as that nature, and America's international allies and partners. Uh, Australia, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, UAE. Uh, I want 
wouldn't say. Obviously, United Kingdom, Spain. I wouldn't be surprised if he throws China in there and nobody knows it. Definitely Japan, uh, South Korea. <laughs> it says, we exist to create and enable impact for the armed services and DOD components across a full range of their missions, from the back office to the front lines of the battlefields. This is what they're doing, guys. This is what they're doing. And look, this, and the... <laughs> I'm trying to read more into it. It won't even pop up. It won't even pop up. Uh, find your future. You obviously, of course, they want you to sign up. As far as careers go, it says from, from, machine, from machine learning software development to program and project management. <laughs> the JAIC is looking for world-class talent ready to work on challenging projects that will ultimately transform the way America's military safeguards our nation. <laughs> get, get the fuck out of here man oh my god uh, the jaic is focused on broad enablement of artificial intelligence capabilities by providing infrastructure developing pathfinder capabilities and offering technical expertise for dod users to pursue their use cases so they put it in a movie in 2008 call it eagle eye a supercomputer AI that can access all electronic information in America and around the world at any given moment, at any given time, instantly, and and operate simultaneously around the world. They put that in the movie. Then years later, they they say, "Oh, look, yeah, we got this AI stuff for DoD, and and you know we're developing certain things." It's already too late. Predictive programming. These movies have propaganda. So can no one say that, oh, we didn't know you guys are doing this, but they're telling us. They're telling us. I often hear people say that it's a, a medic uh, laws or universal laws so that they have to tell us what they're doing. Nah, it's just simple manipulation. It's hiding in plain sight. If I hid something on the ground, even though they have those, you guys be looking for or you call it crazy and stuff because they made everything conspiracy theories and label people crazy. And they put in the movie and put it right in your face and just tell you it's entertainment. So I used to watch those movies and think, oh, they're going to be doing this in the future. But now that I've become more aware, I realize, oh, no, this movie means they already did this shit 10, 15, 20 years ago. And what they got now is way more advanced. So by the time they put in the movie, that means they're 10 or 15 years ahead of that technology. Oh, my God. Because even in the movie, it's talking about social media and stuff like that. Bro, MySpace has only been around for a couple of years when the movie came out. Facebook had only been around for like one or two years when the movie came out. So what social media are they talking about? The fact that they even used the term social media in that movie freaked me out. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't even remember that term even being used around that time. And I'm like 20, what, 21, I think, at that time? 21? Yeah, yeah. 20, 21, somewhere around there? I'm two years in in the Air Force? Oh, my God, man. This is... <laughs> and this one page will not show up. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm just gonna close out of it. Let's actually, let's see if I can refresh it. You know what? We'll take that as a warning sign. Let me go ahead and get off of this shit. Oh my God, I just seen this exact same picture of a robot and a human shaking hands. I just seen an article from Reuters on Twitter earlier today talking about AI and the, hu the human aspect of it. <laughs> they, AI is a real threat, bro. AI is the real threat. Quantum computers and AI is the real threat, man. That is a real thing. That along with corporations, because one thing when the government gets involved into it, but it's another thing when a private corporation gets involved into it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, see, it's nice to take some time out every now and then. Uh, as far as uh, I know, I cover a lot of current events as far as pol politics. Or entertainment and sports, whatever. I know Tiger Woods got into a car accident. There's a bunch of things I could be talking about, but 
sometimes something stands out. I'm like, you know what? I gotta, I gotta get this out. I gotta get this information out, man, because this is eye opening right here. Okay, so it says the United States Department of Defense established the JAIC in 2018. You know, I don't even want to read the rest of this about 2018. <laughs> I just said they do this shit 10, 5, 15 years in advance. The movie comes out in 2008. In 2018, they said, oh, yeah, we're going to put together a joint a uh, AI team or whatever. Uh, to seize upon the transformative potential of artificial intelligence technology for the benefit of America's national security. Over the past decade, re- <laughs> I, th- I swear I didn't read this ahead of time. I promise you, I did not read this shit ahead of time. I promise you, I did not read this shit ahead of time. I, I, oh my God, I swear I did not. So it says, uh, over the past decade, researchers and practitioners of AI technology have made extraordinary progress. Their success has greatly expanded the performance of AI systems across a diverse set of existing applications and also enabled new, previously impossible applications. In January 2019, Lieutenant General Shanahan assumed his role as the first director of the Joint AI Center. In February, the White House released the executive order on maintaining American leadership in in international intelligence, and the Department of Defense released an unclassified summary of the DOD's AI strategy, the one I just tried to click on that you guys would, that the website wouldn't load up to. So much for unclassified. Uh, It says the JAIC is the official focal point. Okay, same thing over and over. Notice that was formed when Trump took over. When Trump was in the White House. Also, when Trump was in the White House, he he developed quantum.gov, which we're going to look at here in a little bit. Trump keeps saying, we have it all. We have, we have the plans. We know what they're doing. You don't think he's using a supercomputer? You don't think he has access to that? Quantum computers, you don't think he has access to that? He then made him seem like a complete moron and stuff, cause, you know, and that's also to his fault too. But when you're the smartest person in the room, or when you have the most information in the room, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody. I don't care if you think I'm stupid; it doesn't matter. I, I know something you don't, to the point that I can't even explain it to you because it's so ab- above your head as far as your conscious awareness. It's you're so completely unaware of what's going on. It doesn't even matter if I sit here and try to explain it to you. I just have to show you in a manner in which that I know that you can understand. You don't think he has access to that? You don't think his team has access to that? He's the commander in chief of the military. In charge of the Department of Defense. In charge of the executive branch. You don't think he has access to the supercomputers? You don't think he was going down there checking and seeing what's going on? You don't think he didn't look at all the data that has been collected on people in the United States and around the world for decades? Better yet, if you were president of the United States, would you do that? Would you look into that shit? And then, if you had all this information, you had access to all this information, what would you do after that? Could you tell the world about it? Could you tell the citizens of the United States about it? And if you were going to tell them, well, how do you go about telling them that? Maybe you do, I don't know. You just drop information on a website. Put it out there on the internet and let the people figure it out themselves. Almost like, you know, your Q drops. Your QAnons. Just another psychological, uh, just another psychological operation, man. That's all these things are, psychological operations. One is trying, both, both are trying to manipulate you, whether you want to call it positive or negative, your universal law of polarity. Two ends of the spectrum. Somewhere in the middle is everything that you need to find out or find the balance to. I t- oh my God, my head is killing me, man. Ah. Uh, <laughs> the five pillars of the DOD AI strategy. Deliver AI-enabled capabilities to address key missions. 
You mean just like the scenario that's that was at the beginning of the Eagle Eye movie? Probability. Doing calculations to come up with a predictive model. When Fauci is talking about, oh, we don't have the probability models. You know, these are just models. We don't really know. Yes, you do know. We have AI, supercomputers, quantum computers that can figure this shit out. That's what they're built for. That's what they're designed for. To do the computations that human beings cannot do. Because human beings have to do things like walk. Like your unconscious body, your unconscious mind breathes on its own. It's, it's telling your body to breathe. It's telling your lungs to inhale, exhale, and stuff. It's telling your heart. Like, who's telling your heart to pump right now? Who's telling your heart to beat right now and, and push blood through your body? Are you doing it? Or are you not doing it? I messed up my kid's head. I'm like, how do you know you're breathing right now? It's almost like Morpheus in, in the Matrix. Are you sure you're breathing? Are you sure of that? Are you, you know, is that what you're actually breathing? Is it oxygen? How do you know these things? How, how do you know that your body knows how to do this stuff? You learn how to walk, but really you just balance yourself out. But the rest of your muscle fibers, your coordination, your, your equilibrium behind your ear, all that stuff is working right now every time. All right, not right now. Yeah, right now. And every time you take a step, every time you walk, you breathe in, you breathe out. Your unconscious mind is doing that. You're not focusing on that. But your brain is so complex, you have no clue how complex it is. You want to talk about a supercomputer? You're a walking uh, bio-organic supercomputer. That's literally what you are as a human being. A walking (laughs) bio-organic supercomputer. It's crazy, right? It says, scale AI's impact across DOD through a common foundation that enables decentralized development and experimentation a lot of words to say really hey we're just gonna put the ai out there and no one will be necessary in charge of it as far as the different impacts across the network of the department of defense but everyone will play a, a role in it decentralization is coming if it's not already here you need decentralization only thing is, if there's some type of human element attached to that decentralization, well, that's how you have access to that decentralization. And then if you can control that human element, then you can essentially have some type of ability to manipulate the system, whether it's decentralized or not. Cultivate a leading AI workforce. So there go your jobs. Bye. Bye Bye-bye jobs. AI is taking over. We worried about immigration in America. So some people worry about oh, they're going to take our jobs like that. Don't worry. AI is taking over. AI. But you just need to transform. If you're not paying attention to how computers work, if you don't know a little basic about coding and stuff like that, you're going to be left behind. And they say this all the time. Because even if AI is there, just like with Ethan Shaw's job in the movie, yeah, the AI was there and stuff, and the AI could do all stuff without him, but you still want the human element there because we don't trust these computers completely because they don't have emotions. These computers do not have emotion, even though they're trying to synthesize uh, a form of emotion w- within some of these artificial intelligence, like your Sophia, that they want to make a national citizen in, in one of the countries. It's still fake. I mean, human beings are fake, but they still feel their emotions are still a little bit more genuine than, than others. Uh, it says engage with commercial, academic and international allies and partners. And then lead in military ethics and AI safety. Military ethics. Yeah, where you want to call that. And so that's AI.mil. Artificial intelligence.mil. Dot military. The military website. Like I say, I, I don't pull up right leaning things or whatever. I pull up the information that is popular. Your left leaning, a uh, left leaning uh, website, CNN, Forbes, all this different stuff. I use their own information. It's just because if you learn how to critical think while you're reading, you can understand these things. And it, it, I'm not gonna lie, it does take practice. It does take practice. But for me, I I operate under the premise of everything's a lie. So as long as I'm super skeptical of everything I'm reading, then I I look at it a different manner, and I don't. 
And it's hard too sometimes because of the words that they use. But hey, if I got to crack over the th- the source, crack open like I, I'm actually opening a fucking book. If I got to open up another web page, another tab of a thesaurus to figure out what some of these words mean, then I'll do it. You know, you're intelligent, man, because you, it's about your level of awareness. Just you got to stay calm and relax sometimes. I'm motivated by trying to find information. So my motivation alone right there will have, have me push through these mental barriers sometimes that we run into, and myself included, when I'm trying to look at certain things. But at the same time, if you just kind of give it, just, just give a little bit more time, because everything takes time. You're not going to get it the first time around. Just give it a little bit more time. You'll get it. I promise you. You'll understand it. It's not complicated. They make it in a manner in which it's complicated because they don't talk in just regular English. Regular language. Like when I talk, I talk in a conversational tone because I'm talking to you. We're having a conversation. I'm thinking out loud. I'm sharing my thoughts with you. I say all the time, just as if you're at my home, we're just chilling and we're just watching TV. And I'm like, hey, maybe we smoke, maybe we drink, whatever the case may be. We're just hanging out. And I'm just like, hey, man, hey, you seen this crazy shit, bro? <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm doing. They do the same things on these websites. But they just put in a manner in which no one can understand because they don't care. They put this up there just to say that, hey, oh, well, we told you guys. And you're like, no, you didn't. Oh, it's on this website. He's like, that doesn't make sense. What are you talking about? Oh, oh, you don't understand it? Oh, well, we thought we wrote it in a way that which you can understand. No, you don't. No, you don't. This is done by design, man. This is done by design. Uh, look, This is the last paragraph. I think some words stuck out to me. It says, at the JAIC, we are focused on attracting and cultivating mission-driven, world-class AI talent to rise to the challenge of harnessing AI to advance America's security and prosperity. Across the DoD, our people are, are driving exciting change at the intersection of AI, large-scale data systems, and some of the most important missions of our time. It is our privilege and opportunity to use AI to improve support for and protection of U.S. service members. By doing so, the JAIC helps safeguard American citizens, support our allies and partners, and improve the affordability and effectiveness of military operations. Meaning the AI is going to do everything for you, think everything through, so all you got to do is follow it. So that's clearly what the, excuse me, that's clearly what the military is doing. Or the AI. And God, I be doing this shit and it has a lot of reaction and it fucks my head up, man. So here you have quantum.gov. And this came out, I believe, last year. And I know I mentioned it before, but that's when I didn't have the live stream up and was recording the video so you guys can see this. So up here it says an official website of the United States government. The .gov means it's official. Federal government websites often end in .gov or .mil before sharing sensitive information. Make sure you're on a federal government site. The site is secure because it's HTTPS, which is hypertext, blah, blah, blah. I forget what the acronym stands for, but it just means that it's encrypted. So it ensures that you are connecting to the official website and that any information you provide is encrypted and transmitted securely. Especially when you want to do uh, financial transaction, anything like that, make sure it's HTTPS because if it doesn't have that S, then it's not encrypted. I mean, shit, even if it is encrypted, it doesn't matter. This quantum computer will break through it anyways. <laughs> but you know it. Oh, my God. So, anything on the internet. Remember, <laughs> DARPA, the Defense Intelligence a Research Project or whatever. is Defense... Defense something. I forget what DARPA stands for. But they are the ones who came up with the internet. ARPA, the ARPANET. And they're in, in the majority of the internet, just these computers that just sit back and talk to each other and stuff. It's not even the web pages. But what you see on the internet that Google has a uh, catalog and stuff, I think it's less than 1%. If not even, it maybe that was a couple of years, that was a few years ago when I found that out. But it might be even less now or even more now, wherever the case may be. So this is National Quantum Initiative, the federal source and gateway to quantum research and development across the United States government. This is what Trump had brought into, and he said the infrastructure. It says, welcome to quantum.gov, the home of the National Quantum Initiative and ongoing activities to explore and promote quantum information science. 
the National Quantum Initiative Act was signed into law on December 21st, 2018. Meanwhile, the AI, uh, your joint AI uh, center task force, where they got going on in the DOD and across the military branches was also brought into existence in 2018. Quantum and AI at the same time. These people are playing a completely different game. Uh, so that's, I say I like Trump, but I don't like him at the same time because he's fucking with us, man. He's fucking with us. <laughs> He gets up on there and he's acting stupid and do goofy stuff and says odd things stuff because he know he'll get attention and stuff like that. But he also using that to divert things away. At the same time, if you know, you know, he's saying certain things and you look into it. They're fucking with us because they're playing a different game than what we're playing. They're not playing the same game as us, man. <laughs> These people are on a different level. They're into different things than what we are. As we play our simple Sims game of life, they're trying to determine or fixate on what's going on around the world and moving chess pieces, pawns and stuff around the world, man. It's a different game, bro. There's a purpose of this act is to ensure the continued leadership of the United States in quantum information science and its technology applications. It provides for a coordinated federal program to accelerate quantum research and development for the economic and national security of the United States. The last report was January 19th, the day before the so-called presidential inauguration. Huh. That is kind of disturbing. A coordinated approach to quantum networking research. I know you heard reports, and I know I talked about it before, as far as Joe Biden being able to have access to uh, <laughs> the Pentagon and stuff like that. Does he have access to the quantum research that's going on? Does he have access to the AI supercomputers that the military, the DOD has? That'll be interesting to know. Ooh, but this is quantum.gov, man. These, uh, oh man, <laughs> they're, just, they're, just in a, they're just doing different things, bro. They're just involved in a different world than what we, we know of. Was his uh, a request for information related to high energy physics and space based astrophysics? This includes quantum sensors. Uh, according, oh man, God, man, the, the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratories, Air Force Office of, of Scientific Research, the National Research Foundation of Korea, and the Institute of Information and Communication Technology, blah, 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 all that for doing, dealing with quantum. <laughs> I don't even want to get into this right now, man. But you see all the different agencies down here. Like I said, DARPA. You click on a DARPA.mil, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Uh, so you have DARPA that's part of the quantum.gov. You have Office of the President, Office of Science and Technology for the President of the United States. Uh, Office of Management and Budget, the uh, U.S. Air Force, uh, Department of Homeland Security, Federal Bureau of Investigations, your FBI, Department of Energy, NSA, National Security Agency, National Science Foundation, uh, U.S. Geological Survey, <laughs> United States Patent and Trademark Office, USDA, United States Department of Agri Agriculture, the same people that tell me my food is organic or not. <laughs> uh, you got nasty little fake ass on here. <laughs> oh, man. Who else? Intelligence Advanced Research Projects Activity. I never even heard of them before. Uh, DOD, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology. Have you even heard of this shit before, bro? Uh, yeah, all these different agencies that we don't even talk about. The United States Navy. So all you see, and the army's on here, and the marines don't count because they're part of the navy. Or it's intelligence gathering, and then the office of the director of national intelligence. <laughs> Your Ratcliffe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is hilarious, bro. And guess what? United States Air Force. 
That's the Space Force falls under the United States Air Force. Or the the Air Force. Or, oh my god. Oh man. It is National Quantum Initiative. You know, I wanna click I'm gonna click on this real quick. This is intelligence advanced research projects activity. Oh, oh look at that, another dot gov. I A R P A dot gov. And it's under the office of the director of national intelligence. And a little this this is all right here. Whoever takes the time to sit here and look at this stuff, man. These people could be doing all types of stuff. And this is just the unclassified things. So you know the classified stuff. And not just your top secret, but your above top secret levels is mind-blowing. You actually think they landed on Mars last week? <laughs> I got to watch that movie uh, for all mankind because apparently they got... AR weapons that they took into space. So as I seen in one of the little promos, I'm like, oh man, what I got watching these entertainment things is full of propaganda and hidden messages. Your predictive programming. It's funny to look into. So here is from defense.gov. Uh, it says quantum science to deliver cutting edge technology to war fighters, officials say. And this is an article from February 23rd, 2021 by David Vergon, uh, DOD News. Uh, it says quantum science is important for the Department of Defense because of the revolutionary technologies that it will bring to war fighters. The principal director of quantum science in the office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering said in an interview recently. Uh, I don't know if I want to play this video. Oh, fuck. Uh, whatever. I'm already fucked anyway. Let's play this. See what it says. Oh, that makes sense, huh? I got to set up my audio real quick. <laughs> I forgot to do the one thing. All right, you guys should be able to hear it now. One of the reasons for this is a lot of the exciting new applications have uh, military implications. And so we, we work with academics. We work with uh, partners in, in the commercial sphere. But when it when it comes to understanding this, how how... This. Oh, and this is Paul Lopota, a principal director of quantum science, office of the undersecretary of research and science can engineering. apply to military problems. We uh, we rely on our um, scientists at DoD research labs, and the um, you know some of the um, some of the most exciting problems are uh, are looking forward to uh, to DoD applications. For example. Uh, applications with new gyros, new accelerometers. Um, you know, there's a strong interplay between uh, <laughs> DoD and academia and the commercial <laughs> sector. But um, you know, I think when it comes to getting, uh, oh getting engaged and seeing the breadth of the field and understanding where uh, where some of the most exciting applications are, there's uh, there's real opportunity in the DoD. <laughs> this this is shit we don't talk about this is shit that they don't talk about everything's a distraction when they get on there and do their little impeachment trial for trump when they get on there and talk about his taxes and stuff or they talk about the insurrection or the lack of insurrection on january 6th these are all distractions man because this is what they're really doing behind the scenes this is what they're really involved in and stuff because once again w war fighting for who 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 else in the world has the same type of technological capabilities that the United States government has as far as the Department of Defense and the military? Who are they trying to fight that they say, oh, we need a space force? Who the fuck is in space that they feel like they need to fight? What is going on, man? These are the things we actually should be focusing on, but we're distracted by our everyday lives, and rightfully so. But don't worry. You got people like me who <laughs> ain't got no real life other than this shit. Outside of my kids and stuff and my and my few friends I do talk to, I only talk to them all the time <laughs> because I'm so wrapped up into this shit because this is so intriguing to me because it's like, hey, what is going on, man? What is going on? This is insane yet incredible all at the same time. Quantum sensors are another exciting future possibility that could be used for such things as missile and aircraft tracking. 
<laughs> they could track a missile. They could track the aircraft, but they can't find missing kids. <laughs> Come on, guy. But the the FBI needs your help to help to figure out to uh, if you've seen the photos of this person, if they were at the Capitol building in insurrection. You tell me they don't have the same access to the 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 capabilities as far as quantum computers and AI. I just showed you that the FBI is part of it too. On quantum.gov, on the quantum initiative, you think they actually need your help to find somebody? You think they couldn't find Osama bin Laden or Saddam Hussein? Oh, we found him in the, underneath the little tunnel or underneath the little hole under the ground and stuff. Bullshit, bro. They can find people whenever they feel like it. They just don't want to tell you. What else is on here? Oh, I, an application where quantum science is used today is empowering is empowering the automatic uh, oh, okay let's try this again my head is still messed up okay so it says <laughs> an application where quantum science is used today is empowering the atomic clocks used by gps satellites which must be precisely synchronized so atomic with a but we're talking about quantum then it's a subatomic level that these clocks need to be synchronized. Lopato said that it's important because military systems such as aircraft and missiles need to have a great deal of precision, navigation, and timing because they don't want to have no more collateral damage. But what happens when they can specifically blow up someone and minimize damage? No civilian uh, uh, collateral damage, none of that. No. They can kill and take out whoever they want, whenever they want, however it means they want to do it. These people are playing a different game. Uh, Lupata Lincoln uh, likened quantum science to the military's first use of electricity in the 1800s, which was used to power telegraphs. The first information technology, the first information technology of its kind, IT, that greatly improved long distance command, control, and communications. Everything is developed in the Department of Defense and the government first. And then they give it some type of commercial application and then they sell it. They take the patents of the things that they develop in the DOD or across the DOD for, for Department of Defense purposes. And then they take the patent and they use that patent technology and give you things like, I don't know, an iPhone. Or rather, even better, GPS, global positioning satellite. Because remember, they just popped up out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, look at this GPS tracking. Everybody, for those who remember, you got your Tom Toms and stuff like that in your car. And then now those things are so obsolete. It's like, I'll just pull out my phone and I can figure out where I'm going from there. Uh, what it says. Oh, of course, the U.S. isn't the only nation pursuing quantum science for military use, he said. So-called great power competitors, Russia and China are as well. You see, if, how you gonna, on the, on the defense.gov is gonna say so-called? Because, man, they know Russia and China just ain't there yet. We know China, actually, I kind of, I learned this from Tory Says Show, and I didn't even think about it, but it makes so much sense. But what China, what China does is infiltrate a lot of different things and steal technology. And it's something that uh, Mike Pompeo was talking about as well, the former secretary uh, or secretary of state. Oh man. Okay. I, I'm gonna get off this website. I can't. <laughs> oh, they're just fucking with us, man. So this is an article here from, uh, Z, uh, ZDNet.com. And this talks about quantum computers. It says a quantum computer just solved a decades old problem. 3 million times faster than a classical computer. 3 million times faster. And so you sit there thinking a classical computer, you know, the things that I'm on, that you're on and stuff like that. Hell, your smartphone can do these things so fast. They have a quantum computer that can do it 3 million times faster. They're playing a different game than what we're playing. They are, they're on a whole different level than us. It's mind boggling. It says using a method called, uh, using a method called quantum annealing, D-waves researchers 
demonstrated that a quantum computational advantage could be achieved over classical means. And this article came out yesterday, the 23rd of February, 2021. Scientists from quantum computing company D-Wave, which I, I think we talked about when I showed you guys that one video on YouTube about uh, uh, quantum computing and uh, how, it was messing, how it was causing a Mandela effect and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so scientists from quantum computing company D-Way have demonstrated that using a method called quantum annealing, they could simulate some materials up to 3 million times faster than it would take with corresponding classical methods. Together with researchers from Google, you know, Google has their own AI supercomputer. Together with researchers from Google, the scientists set out to measure the speed of simulation in one of D-Way's quantum annealing processors and found that performance increased with both simulation size and problem difficulty to reach a million-fold speed up over what could be achieved with the classical CPU. So just a regular processor, so they did that way faster. There's a whole different world going on, man. There's a whole different world going on that we're, we're not a part of. That's, that's just honest to God's truth. When I say things are done by design, it's literally done by design. Whether it's a group of people, whether it's a thousand groups of people, wherever the case may be, so these things are done by design. Come to find out, it's probably not a group of people, it's probably just an AI supercomputer. Now we have no idea where the AI supercomputers are pulling the strings, where they're the ones behind all these bots, and it's on social media, these whole called uh, things that's going on in pop culture and stuff like that. Are these people actually real? Who is actually behind the keyboard? Talking. Uh, typing, rather. Who, who's behind the microphone talking? What is going on? Hey, I, show, I showed you a video of me <laughs> before, so hey, <laughs> hope you, I mean, I, I guess I'm real. I guess I proved that I'm real. I mean, I don't even know what real is anymore, to be honest with you. I don't even think people even understand quantum computers or the quantum realm or quantum physics or qubits and what's going on in the subatomic world. That alone right there is mind blowing. When you're talking about computations being done on a, on a quantum level affecting our reality. Because things act differently in a quantum level and, and atoms and particles alone are different. They behave differently once a conscious observer observes them then they form structures and a reality created oh man there's so much going on that you have no clue that i have no clue about that is going over our heads but it's not complicated we're just unaware of it you need to understand that i need to understand that as i say it really to myself that hey, it's not complicated it's not it's not it's designed to be confusing but it's not complicated you just gotta take the time to try to understand it in the way that you understand it and you know you do your own research you check out a video someone else around the world probably can explain things wherever the case may be you can figure out anything and everything if you put your mind to it everything is mental universal law the only real universal law everything is mental if you put your mind to it and you put the time into it you could figure shit out. Now, do you want to be an expert on quantum computing and stuff like that? Probably not. But do you want to have a basic understanding of what's going on? Probably. Will it take some time? Yeah. I have a loose understanding of what's going on. So some of the basic concepts, but even then, I'm still like, oh my God, what is all this? Because even when I look into this stuff, all I can think of is they have this shit now. That means we have no idea what's going on. That means we have no idea. You know, our so-called political leaders, and, and what do you want to call them, the United States, and even governments around the world, how, how we not know that they're not being guided by an AI supercomputer? Because you take recommendations from your, your, your smartphone, right? When you search something on a search engine, you're taking the recommendations of an algorithm, a computer software program giving you algorithms or utilizing algorithms to give you recommendations based on what keywords you typed in. You're already 
programmed to take suggestions from a computer. So you don't think people in the executive branch, people in Congress, people in the Senate, people in the government in the United States of America and around the world, are you don't think they're taking recommendations from a computer? Probability? Statistics? You don't think that they're doing that? So if they're doing that, what makes these people better than the rest of us? How come you can't be president and run a country? People already think Trump is a joke anyway. Well, so if that's the case, then guess what? Anybody can be president and run a country. Because that's literally what he showed us. If Trump is such a joke, he's an idiot. All right, that's even better because that means it's not that hard to run a country. Because did a country implode on itself in America? Nah. In fact, he went out and made peace agreements and made peace in the Middle East. So apparently it can't be that fucking hard. It's not that complicated. Hell, Joe Biden is half asleep most of the time. He don't know what's going on. He can't even stumble. He stumbles over his word in just a regular speech. But yeah, he's sitting there. So who's actually running the country? Who's doing things? You have a human element, and apparently you have an AI supercomputer element as well. But don't let the AI supercomputer take control and decide to, I don't know, eliminate the executive branch. But maybe in not such a drastic manner, because if it's an AI supercomputer, it wouldn't just kill everybody off, like you see in the movie, like far as Eagle Eye goes. You know, you'll come with a more better divisive, or not divisive, but a more precise plan where you find a way to remove them. And the best way to remove these people is to expose the corruption and the things that they're doing. So that way you don't remove them yourself. We the people remove them because that's what it comes down to in America. We the people. And then you open up the eyes of everyone around the world and show, hey, this is how you get rid of these people. Almost like in Myanmar or Burma. There's one way to fight corruption and remove a corrupt government. And then there's another way to fight corruption and remove a corrupt government. Two ends of the spectrum. And you're seeing both play out in real time. As far as what happened, what is happening in Myanmar and what is happening in the United States of America. You see it all the time. You just don't know what you're looking at. You know, I want to show you guys. I wasn't going to, but I kind of want to leave off. Leave, leave off, yeah leave off with this and it's a simple thing but it's so simple at the same time it's so like hey uh, uh why is this there why did they even bother posting this and uh let me go ahead and pull my screen back up so i seen this on gab actually and then i then i later saw this on twitter but this is from the U.S. Marshals. It posted yesterday on the 23rd, 2021. It says on February 23rd, 1861, President-elect Abraham Lincoln, uh, Abraham Lincoln, excuse me, quietly slipped into Washington, D.C. to prepare for his inauguration on March 4th. Accompanying him was U.S. Marshal Ward Hill Lemon, La uh, Layman, L-A-M-O-N, a friend and former law partner. It says the 20th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution ratified in 1933 moved presidential inauguration day from March 4th to January 20th, something that we talked about before on this show. Our tweet made a purely historical reference to President-elect Abraham Lincoln's arrival in the District of Columbia on February 23rd, 1861 in the company of the U.S. Marshal Ward Hill Layman, ahead of Lincoln's first inauguration. No other meaning or context was intended or implied. So I just wanted to show you guys that because first and foremost, why do they feel like they need to have that last tweet? Or well, because uh, what, it was a QAnon people were like, hey, well, is this going to happen with Trump and stuff like that? Yeah. Well, of course, that would be a, a, a logical deduction from that because why would you put that out there? <laughs> and, and then their cop out is, oh, we're just putting up here because of, you know, U.S. Marshal and stuff. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and then they, and then they also cop out excuses. Oh, you know, this is just a historical thing. So we're just letting you know. Well, that's, that's good information. No. Knowledge is power. Information is everything. Once again, 
These people are playing a different game than the rest of us. They're playing a different game than the rest of us. As always, I will be back on tomorrow, Monday through Friday, 11 Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to check out a live stream, I'll upload a video version of the podcast to my YouTube and Odyssey channel after the live stream. I also upload the audio version of the podcast to uh, my Podbean and uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and wherever else I'm at that. I forgot. I think Our Heart Radio and some other stuff too. As always, you can go to my website, DamianJackson22.com. Check out my podcast links and my social media account links. Follow me on Twitter or do wherever you want. If you want to contact me, find messages, stuff like that, and other information. Always do your own research. Don't take my word for it. I'm just a random guy talking his ass off on the internet. What I say means nothing other than just some information that you can gather from to come to your own conclusions. I have no answers. I'm just out here spewing shit out my ass, <laughs> talking out of my head, bringing up thoughts and stuff, just having a conversation. Do your own research because you're intelligent. You, you have the awareness. You can understand these things, what's going on in the world. <laughs> I say you're intelligent, even though I don't like the word intelligent. <laughs> kind of odd, right? But you get what I'm saying. I'll be back on tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Podcast will be on tomorrow. Make sure you check it out. Enjoy the rest of your day. Whenever you hear this, <laughs> enjoy life. Be happy. Spread positive messages. Think positively. All that good stuff. So until next time. 